Hello, my name is Somer Satama and I will be presenting our work on compressing proofs of KRF and partial knowledge. This is joint work with my co-authors Ronald Kramer and Sarah Sphere. In proofs of partial knowledge, a prover claims to know k secret solutions out of n pro public problem instances. And it wishes to convince a verifier that it does, without the verifier learning which k out of n secrets the prover knows. This problem was introduced by Kramer, Damgaard and Schoemakers at Crypto94. Some examples are uh, proving knowledge of k out of n discrete logarithms, or proving knowledge of the openings of k out of n commitments, or uh, proving knowledge of k out of n pre-images with respect to some hash function h of uh, uh, bit strings y1 up to yn. Proofs of par partial knowledge have found um, numerous applications, uh, in particular the case k equals 1, so 1 out of n uh, proofs of partial knowledge. Some examples are threshold and ring signature schemes, uh, e-voting protocols and confidential transaction systems. On the other end, we have the, the very generic circuit zero knowledge protocols. In a circuit zero knowledge protocol, the, the prover wishes to prove knowledge of a secret vector x that satisfies a constraint c of x equals zero captured by some arithmetic circuit c. So recently we've seen many advances in circuit zero knowledge protocols, SNARK, STARKS, bulletproofs, compressed sigma protocol theory. In different lines of work, achieving logarithmic or even constant communication complexity uh, for the circuit zero knowledge problem. Circuit zero knowledge protocols also immediately give a solution uh, for the proofs of partial knowledge uh, uh, problem. What we can do namely is we can capture the proof of partial knowledge relation by an arithmetic circuit. So for example for the 1 out of n case we could construct an arithmetic circuit that evaluates to zero if and only if the input x to this arithmetic circuit is the discrete logarithm of one of the public problem instances pi. If we uh, capture this proof of partial knowledge relation by an arithmetic circuit, then we can apply a circuit zero knowledge protocol in a black box matter and uh, obtain a proof of partial knowledge. So this is a somewhat indirect approach in which we first capture the uh, proof of partial knowledge relation by an arithmetic circuit. This is a, a, quite, a quite a strong uh, approach because it works for arbitrary k and n and you can achieve logarithmic or even constant communication complexity depending on the circuit zero knowledge protocol that you use. However, there are some clear disadvantages of the circuit zero knowledge approach. First, it is conceptually superfluous. The arithmetic circuits that uh, result in this, this approach are quite complicated uh, and, and, and they're really tailored to a specific instantiation. So for example, if we want to prove discrete logarithms in another group, then <coughs> we would require another uh, arithmetic circuit capturing the, the, the relation. So this is uh, unnecessarily complicated in that sense. Moreover, uh, this approach is asymptotically efficient. As we already mentioned, we can achieve communication complexity that is logarithmic or even constant. But uh, these large or complicated arithmetic circuits uh, can cause a practical overhead. Um, and also note that you have to generate, store and process all these uh, large arithmetic circuits. So this is a practical overhead that we want to avoid. So the goal of this work is to develop a direct approach, avoiding the overhead of large arithmetic circuits. And our approach should work for arbitrary k and n, and we aim to achieve a logarithmic communication complexity. There has been prior work on proofs of partial knowledge. However, for different reasons, prior work does not achieve our goal. So we already mentioned proofs of partial knowledge uh, introduced by Kramer, Damgaard and Schoenmakers in uh, 1994. So uh, the ingredients of their uh, proofs of partial knowledge are a basic sigma protocol, a special honest verifier zero knowledge simulator, and a linear secret sharing scheme. Their approach works for arbitrary k and n, and also for a broad class of sigma protocols, 
So not just for the Sigma protocol uh, for proving knowledge of a discrete logarithm, but for, for many other Sigma protocols. However, their approach is a linear communication complexity, so linear in N. On the other end, we have a much more recent approach uh, for one out of many proofs of partial knowledge uh, introduced by Groth and Kohlweis in uh, 2015. This, uh, their, their protocol focuses on the special case k equals 1, so really 1 out of uh, n uh, proofs of partial knowledge, uh, and it does not generalize well to arbitrary k. So informally, their approach is basically to commit to the bits of the index of the known secret. Uh, and, and, and then they use a sigma protocol for, for proving the desired relations. Because they only commit to the, uh, to the bits of the index of the known secret, they achieve a logarithmic communication complexity. This approach has also been instantiated uh, uh, for, for uh, a lattice assumption in, uh, in 2019. Of course, this lattice assumption or this instantiation required some adaptations that were uh, worked out by the authors uh, of this, uh, this paper. So prior works either achieve a linear communication complexity or they are tailored to the specific case k equals 1. So we aim to construct a protocol that works for arbitrary k and n and achieves a logarithmic communication complexity. We will be using uh, techniques from the proofs of partial knowledge uh, approach of CDS94, but we will also build in uh, on uh, the techniques from compressed sigma protocol theory introduced at crypto 2020. So compressed sigma protocol theory, uh, what they basically do is they develop a compression mechanism for a basic sigma protocol for linear statements. So they start with a basic sigma protocol that has a linear communication complexity and they develop a compression mechanism that reduces the communication complexity of this basic sigma protocol from linear down to logarithmic. So then they also show how to uh, use this uh, compressed sigma protocol for linear statements to develop a circuit zero knowledge protocol for arbitrary arithmetic circuit relations. So also for nonlinear relations. And the key uh, technique is linearization uh, technique based on arithmetic secret sharing. They have shown how to instantiate this theory from a variety of hardness assumptions. So for example, uh, ring SIS assumption, the discrete logarithm assumption, the strong RSA assumption, or the knowledge of exponent assumption. So given this compressed sigma protocol theory, a natural question that arises is whether we can compress the proof of partial knowledge sigma protocol of CDS94 to reduce the communication complexity of their approach from, from linear down to logarithmic. So in our work, we basically show that yes, we can do that. We can compress the proofs of partial knowledge approach uh, of uh, CDS94. But it does require some adaptations and some twists to the original protocols. So first we need to uh, develop a novel twist on the basic compressed sigma protocol for proving linear statements uh, from uh, AC20. What we have to do is we have to show that we can open arbitrary homomorphisms instead of uh, only linear forms. So basically the, the, the crypto 2020 paper was focused or, or was restricted to opening linear forms on committed factors. And now what we want to do is we want to open arbitrary homomorphisms. So this is a first uh, generalization that is required uh, for, for our uh, techniques. Uh, and second, we also have to adapt the uh, CDS-194 approach. Basically, the, the, the Sigma protocol in the original paper, in the 1994 paper, is not compressible, so it's not amenable to uh, the compression mechanism of compressed sigma protocol theory. So what we do is we basically adapt the sigma protocol to make sure that we can apply compression. Altogether, we, uh, uh, we, we derived the, at the following uh, main result. So there exists a protocol for proving knowledge of k out of n discrete logarithms, and its communication costs from prover to verifier are indeed logarithmic. 
and this approach works for arbitrary k and m. Besides our main result, we also have a number of extensions to our main proof of partial knowledge protocol. First, we show how to reduce the communication complexity further uh, with a factor 2 by using a pairing based commitment scheme. Second, uh, our, our main protocol is for proving knowledge of KLF and discrete logarithms. This functionality has a natural extension to uh, multi exponentiations and proving knowledge of K out of N uh, vector commitment openings. Also, these techniques are uh, compatible with, uh, with circuit zero knowledge uh, protocols. So, this basically uses the plug and play nature of compressed sigma protocol theory. What we can do is we can, for example, prove that uh, not only that we know K out of N uh, secrets but uh, that also these KLFN secrets satisfy some arbitrary constraint captured by an arithmetic circuit C. Uh, a first application uh, in, in, uh, was, was presented in a follow-up paper, uh, succinct threshold signature schemes with a transparent setup. So these were the first threshold signature schemes without a trusted setup, uh, for which the threshold signatures have size uh, logarithmic in N. And also, a lattice instantiation should be possible. So, uh, recently, uh, also at Crypto 2021, uh, a compressed uh, Sigma protocol theory was instantiated from lattice assumptions. And using these techniques, it should be possible to, um, to instantiate uh, our proofs of partial knowledge protocols uh, from a lattice assumption. So, you've already seen that uh, uh, our proofs of partial knowledge protocol achieves a uh, logarithmic communication complexity, but also the concrete communication uh, costs are comparable or competitive with, with other approaches. So for example, uh, our uh, communication costs are comparable with the dedicated solutions for the case k equals 1. So we achieve the same constants even for these uh, approaches if we instantiate our generic solution for the case k equals 1. Uh, and if k is uh, in the order of omega n divided by log n, then we achieve an asymptotic improvement over the indirect circuit zero knowledge approach. Before we explain our techniques, we recall the Crypto 94 proof of partial knowledge protocol. We consider the following scenario. There are n public group elements p1 up to pn, and for k out of n indices i, the prover knows the discrete logarithm. These indices are captured by a secret subset S and the discrete logarithms are captured by a secret factor X. Moreover, we will use a basic sigma protocol pi for proving knowledge of a single discrete logarithm together with its special honest verifier zero knowledge simulator. Informally, for the discrete logarithms that it knows, the prover runs k honest instances of sigma protocol pi and for the n minus k discrete logarithms that it does not know, it runs the simulator. Moreover, the proof will use a linear secret sharing scheme to make sure the verifier does not know for which instances the protocol was run honestly and for which instances the uh, protocol uses the or the prover uses the special honest verifier zero knowledge simulator. Moreover, the linear secret sharing scheme makes sure that the prover must evaluate the protocol honestly for at least k problem instances. So it must know at least k discrete logarithms. So in more details, in the first step, the prover computes k first messages honestly and simulates n minus k transcripts. For the second message, the verifier samples a single challenge for all n problem instances and sends it to the, ver or to the prover. In the third step, the prover computes an n minus k plus one comma n secret sharing C1 up to Cn of C, such that the n minus k challenges simulated in the first step correspond to the secret shares. The parameters of the secret sharing scheme are such that the prover can control at most n minus k entries of the secret sharing 
<coughs> for the other k instances, the prover must compute the final response honestly because it cannot control the, the, the challenge corresponding to that problem instance. So the prover sends the secret sharing and all final response to the verifier who verifies all N transcripts and the secret sharing. Let us now discuss our twist on a compressed sigma protocol. A central protocol of AC20 shows how to open arbitrary linear forms on completely committed factors. And this protocol has a logarithmic communication complexity. More precisely, what this protocol does is it allows a prover to prove knowledge of a commitment opening X such that L of X equals Y for some linear form L. So what we show in our paper is that this functionality extends to opening arbitrary homomorphisms. So instead of having uh, a codomain ZQ, we now have a homomorphism for which the codomain is an arbitrary group G. So this extension comes at a cost as it increases the communication costs uh, by a factor 2. Next, we note that even with our generalization uh, of the compression mechanism of AC20, the CDS94 sigma protocol is not compressible. And the reason is basically that first of all, the first message of the CDS94 uh, sigma protocol uh, has already size linear in N. So we have to send first messages for all N uh, instances. And also the final message uh, contains this secret sharing C1 up to Cn. And this secret sharing is not compressible. So basically uh, we, we cannot apply the compression mechanism uh, to the CDS94 Sigma protocol. For this reason we develop a novel technical approach to CDS94. And the approach is as follows. So we first reduce the k out of n case to the n out of n case where the prover knows all discrete logarithms. And we do this by eliminating the exponents that the prover does not know. And we use an elimination factor S1 up to Sn, um, with Si equals to zero for all i not in S. So for all indices i for which the prover does not know a discrete logarithm. Then instead of proving knowledge of the discrete logarithms Pi, we are going to prove knowledge of the discrete uh, logarithms of qi, which is pi to the power si. And note that the prover knows the discrete logarithms of all qi, because for i in s, the discrete logarithm is simply the product of si and xi, and for i not in s, the discrete logarithm is simply zero. So by using this elimination factor, we uh, we allow the prover to eliminate the, um, uh, the group elements for which it does not know a discrete logarithm. So the prover is free to choose the elimination factor S as long as it satisfies certain properties. So for example, the factor S can contain at most n minus k zeros. If it contains more zeros, then the prover will only prove, uh, uh, prove knowledge of less than k uh, sequent elements. So that's not what we want. So to this end, we will be using uh, the protocol for opening homomorphisms. And we will define the following homomorphisms. And uh, we will also define the following factor Y. So the factor Y contains the elimination factor S, and it also contains the discrete logarithms of the uh, group elements QI. So SI, XI is the, is the discrete logarithm of QI for all I uh, between 1 and N. Now note that if we evaluate the homomorphism fi in uh, the point or in the vector uh, y, then it will map to the identity element. This is basically by construction. And also what we can show is that if this is indeed the case, then the prover must indeed know a discrete logarithm of uh, uh, qi. So what we will be doing is we will uh, ask the prover to commit to this uh, long factor y and prove that it satisfies this relation, this homomorphism relation for all i of 1 up to n. 
So what remains is for the prover to show that the uh, elimination factor S contains at most n minus k zeros. And we do this by enforcing uh, S to be an n minus k plus one comma n secret sharing of one. Such a secret sharing can namely contain at most n minus k zeros. So this somewhat resembles the uh, use of the linear secret sharing scheme in the original CDS94 approach. So such a secret sharing can be defined by a polynomial of degree at most n minus k. So a polynomial Px uh, that evaluates to 1 in 0 uh, and has degree at most n minus k. So we adapt the, the, the protocol by instead of uh, uh, committing to the long factor y that contains this elimination factor directly, we, co uh, we, we commit to the somewhat shorter factor uh, y with the coefficients of this polynomial px defining the secret sharing. Uh, we also have to adapt the homomorphisms and because the um, because an evaluation of Px is always a linear combination of the coefficients Ai, to which the prover is now committed, uh, the, the adapted homomorphisms are, are still homomorphisms, they are still linear functions. So altogether, our proofs of k out of n partial knowledge protocol takes this form. In the first step, the prover uh, computes this secret sharing polynomial Px, uh, that evaluates to 1 in 0 and it evaluates to 0 in all for all i not in s so for all i for which the prover does not know a discrete logarithm and then it commits to this long factor y containing the coefficients of this polynomial px and the discrete logarithms of these elements qi then it sends this commitment uh, to this long factor y to the verifier and then we use our uh, compressed sigma protocol for uh, opening homomorphisms to prove that this committed factor uh, satisfies the appropriate homomorphism relations. So if we uh, analyze the communication costs of our approach, we see that we still have to open n different homomorphisms. So if we would do this naively, then the communication costs would still be linear in n. However, the communication costs of opening n homomorphisms can be amortized resulting in a communication complexity that is roughly the same as opening only one homomorphism. And if we apply this amortization technique, we see that uh, we obtain a communication cost of roughly four uh, uh, log n items. Finally, we come back to an extension mentioned before on reducing the communication costs by an additional factor two. This can be achieved by using a pairing-based commitment uh, scheme using an adaptation of a technique from compressed sigma protocol theory, AC20. In their crypto 2020 paper, they managed to reduce the communication cost by uh, a factor 2 by committing to a secret factor and its linear form evaluation in a single compact commitment. That is, the linear form evaluation L of x was incorporated into the commitment. To apply this technique to our generalization of opening homomorphisms instead of linear forms, we need a compact commitment scheme for mixed factors with coefficients in the field ZQ and in some group G. So some of its coefficients uh, are in the field ZQ and other coefficients are group elements. There exist pairing-based commitment schemes with these desired properties, allowing us to reduce the communication costs. Thanks for your attention. If you have questions, feel free to contact me or join our uh, live presentation on August 19th.